sorry about the delay. Um, my name is Morten Rasmussen. Um, I'm working for ARM. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, system topology and how it's used in the scheduler. Um, it is a little bit ARM64 focused because this thing was prompted by um, a challenge issue, call it what you like. Uh, we see in ARM64 at the moment. Um, so I only have a few slides. I'm trying to encourage as much discussion as possible. So here I try to describe what we have as the default topology set up in Linux today. So on most systems, and these are the non numerous systems we're talking about now, we have three levels. We sort of try to describe the system as, as, as a hierarchical topology um, to try to reflect how the systems are actually designed. So this is a made up system where you have uh, four cores. Each core has two hardware threads. The hardware threads share level one, and you have two cores sharing a level two. Then you have a package which consists of two sets of these. I'm not even sure if there exists such a system today um, outside the ARM world. Well, in ARM we don't even have that because we don't really have anybody in implementing SMT even though it's allowed in the architecture. Um, aside from the SMT, this looks like 4 to a quad. It's a very ancient chip, but it looks like Yeah. So I think it's it's a bit of a hybrid of what exists in Intel world and what exists in ARM world today, because in ARM this is still quite normal to have, that you have level twos which are not um, package-wide, you actually have them per cluster. So if I interpret the way that the topology levels are defined in, in Linux, I think this is how they're supposed to be mapped. At SMT level, you have a domain which spans your core, which means that what you see when you look at an SMT domain is all the sibling hardware threads within a single core. At MC level, you're seeing a number of cores which each have SMT levels inside them, and they share a cache, and that's supposed to be the last level cache that they share, so, so the widest cache you have in your system. And die level, which is hardly used in x86, if I understand it correctly, we, we still use it on ARM, and that's actually where the problem comes, um, is meant to cover the number, if you have multiple last level caches in your system, then the die level would span all of those. Um, for each of these levels, there is a set of flags defined, which the, uh, which the scheduler uses to, uh, to sort of modify its behavior. So on SMT level, this is, this common shows the default flag settings. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them here, but the first flag actually indicates that this is SMT. Share CPU capacity means that the cores inside this domain have some influence in each other's um, throughput. Um, the second one, share package resource, I think that's currently being interpreted as being that cores that have that are in a domain with this flag set, they share share cache basically. Yeah, I don't know where those names come from, but yeah, it is share cache. Yeah. And this is an important, and this is an important one because in the scheduler, when we balance load or balance tasks when, when they wake up, this determines which CPUs we actually consider as potential targets for for a task when it wakes up. Okay. So the further up we set this, the bigger the search space is for finding a target CPU. Um, <coughs> and it probably makes sense to have that rely on where your last level cache is. As in, probably want your task to wake up on a CPU that shares the same last level cache as the CPU was previously running, because otherwise you'll get some penalty migrating your context from a, one cache to another. Um, for other types of balancing, in the schedule we also do periodic load balancing, idle load balancing. Um, that flag doesn't have as much influence, or it doesn't have any influence, I think. And for new tasks, um, exec or pull, um, there is a different set of flags that determine what to do. So if, when, when we forward exec a task, 
Brexit balance all the way up based on, on, on these flags down here. So, yeah, the point is the schedule does different things depending on how these flags are set. Um, this is all fine, but on ARM64, this is how things actually match to the concepts we have in the ARM64 architecture. Um, so cores are still mapped to SMT. Don't really have any of these, but the architecture allows it. Um, MC level is an ARM world mapped to clusters. And that was decided for some reason, some years back, that this is how we're going to map things. It probably made sense back then because the cluster in, in the previous designs and many of the designs that are on the market today would have a level two cache which is shared with the cluster. But you can have multiple clusters in, in your system, which means that you don't have, you don't necessarily have a lot of cache to span the whole thing. And that's actually pretty normal in the mobile segment. That you have a level two for, for one cluster and a level two for a second cluster. So most of the big little systems you see in the market, they would have a last level cache for little CPUs and a last level cache for big CPUs. Um, the problem that comes in is that we don't just build mobile systems that use the ARM64 topology. We actually have some server parts. And the way that they're described or built is that you have loads of clusters in, in, a, in a single package. And I think all the server parts we've seen are all the SMP platforms. And that means that servers we have, because we use the default flag settings as I showed you before, it means that when we wake up uh, new tasks, they're actually constrained to the cluster. So you might have a nice system with, I don't know how many cores there are. There is no L3, those parts? There is. Then you're setting your flags around. Yeah. Or you set your domain wrong. Well, I don't know if the ARM64 architecture code does something wrong. Yes. <laughs> so, so we, I, from my point of view, we can do two things. I mean, we've benchmarked this, we have some guys that have looked into this uh, and found that this is really bad for certain workloads. I mean, seriously bad not to, uh, to balance across the entire package. Uh, because they have a distributed level three that sits on top of this and we completely ignore some, that fact. Yeah, if there is an L3, we should also draw it and the MC should spend the L3. Are you Are you yep. Um, so, I haven't drawn the L3 here, but so the server part. The, the light, the light, the light, the light, um, yeah, the, the, the L3. <laughs> 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 but this is, this, is your, this is your package. But even for systems that don't have a level 3, does it really make sense to not balance across the clusters? I mean, we do have. The, uh, the first high keyboard we had was an SMP platform with two clusters in a single SOC. And actually, we don't wake up balance across the, uh, the clusters in that platform. Yeah. Is that the right or wrong thing to do? Just because they don't, they are not listed in the spec as being, being a last level catch. I mean, we do have an unchip coherent interconnect, so it's not that expensive migrating between the two clusters. So, so, so where, where is the limit really? I mean, if you have a distributed level three cache, how different is that from having two separate caches and a cache current interconnect? It's just yeah, a matter so of the definition. Three, we know trees, we have 20 minutes here of sharing of the Yeah, yeah. but more than this, now arguing the case for a tightly integrated L2. What's the difference? Hmm. Well, I mean, it depends where you want to put your pain point. Uh, mm -hmm. If you say the, yes, there, um, you can interpret it as two slices of an integrated cache, mm -hmm. then I'm fine with two setting SD shared across the entire thing. Mm -hmm. um, if they really are two independent ones and it's expensive, then yeah, that works. So the reason why we haven't really seen the problem in the mobile segment, I think, is that most people that build this build big little. And for big little, there are other reasons why we don't want to 
bound between the two clusters. Um, but for servers, there is no such thing, and, and they really want to balance between yeah. them. And for, for a bit, um, for the IT, for local radio, you've done some tests showing some performance improvement? I haven't tested on the high keyboard, but we have tests from the from the server part. Which is yeah, but they are they are sharing this S3 cache. I mean, they have a shared them. So cache. Uh, that make, that makes sense. If you want to, yeah, but that's yeah. built on top of the cache parent interconnect too. The big question is so big time issue. Can you accept the uh, shared capacity back by the higher one? That's one of the uh, the two solutions I'd see. So we can't just set the SD share package resource up here. Then the question is, do we want to preserve the MC level? Do we want to still have a, 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 a scheduling domain that represents the clusters? It won't be used in the wake-up part where we see the big problem. Because the wake-up part only considers where the last level the cache is. Also, that I know that these flags um, are expected to be set on all the domains below. So if you set it on DAI, you must set it on MC, you must set it on SMC. Yeah. So if we want to do that, then we need dynamic code in, uh, in ARM64 to determine where the last level cache is, and then based on that, set the flags correctly on all the other levels. As it is right now, we don't define, uh, well, that's going to change with the, the initial scheduling, but at the moment, we don't even define a, a custom topology like we do in x86. We just rely on the default one. Everything default. Yeah, so x86 is, is custom because you have new main and yeah, you have yeah, IT, IT IT uh, means that you have um, well, different yeah, flags. But, um, but the, the, the custom code there started with AMD and Prolabus, and then a, uh, Intel did, what did they call it? Is the first one? Cluster on DAI, and then it became sub new cluster. Right? Yeah, those. Yeah. Um, but, and then we added ITMT, uh, ITM, something like that. I think it's called ITMT. I'm not 100 percent sure, but that was that more letters with an I, T, and an M. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I think that one only modifies some of the um, that basically. Yeah, but most of our enumeration is from CPU ID. It just changes that one. So on yours, you have a condition that these might be ones if you have ITMT. Um, so yeah, either we set the flags dynamically, which basically means that by means something different for, for ARM64 than just for all other architectures. So it basically would mean that die would become package, MC would become cluster. So so if there is an L3, MC should be the L3. Okay. In that case, then this is not the solution. Then it's the previous one we want. And that is to redefine MC to being the, uh, the physical package. And on the, the hypothetical one without an L3, <laughs> that's interesting. There you can go either way. Um, but if there is an L3, it should be the MC one. Then so what would be the lower ones? Like, then you have cluster and the floor and that right? Then you just wouldn't have cluster unless we go in and create a new level in uh -huh. here to reflect the clusters. But is there really a need for that? Well, if there's some advantage in um, it's like balancing the or something. Yeah, but it only affects periodic balance. I mean, for wake up, we don't care if there is something in between here. Are you sure? Because even in your wake so in the wake up pass, in the first pass, we are able to be at the next, but on the other side, we are trying to narrow what the needs. So we start in the wake up only the previous and next, and then we pick either one, uh, yeah. for wake fine, and then we scan the entire LLC. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it has it has no effect. Uh, Except when you wait for it. Well, you're talking about the capacity or the wait. Wait, why just decide whether you no, go no, with the wait uh, uh, for setting the scheduling. Uh, the wake up thing there is the wake up the wake up and there is the other one. Uh, wake up and just decide whether you balance near you or any of the previous if you use the same function to do the search and that just iterates over all the last yeah, level of the uh, 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 there is two 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 paths in the wake up pass. The one when you for wake ups or you mean for fork and exact? 
Both can accept, they use the hierarchy. No, 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 even for the wake catch. You can, uh, in the wake wiki mechanism where you can say that but not only look at the previous and next. But that, that's not used to find the actual CPU, it's just, it's just used to decide whether or not we look near the, the waker or we look, look near the previous CPU. You end up calling select RG sibling in the end anyway. Right. So the, the, I think the stuff that you're talking about is, is um, a throttle on the waker find decision, either yeah. here or there. Yeah. That's the first decision we make. Are we going to wait where he needs to run, or are we going to wait near where whomever runs that for us? Yeah. That's the first decision yeah. we make. After that, we we scan whichever cache we hit for idols. Um, and then there's the fork and exec path. Which actually use the, the, the hierarchy. Yeah. Uh, for, for and then total is good, my friend. And the priority load balance and the no hertz balance and all that would also use the proper hierarchy. But for wake ups, which seems to be where at least the the, uh, the use case we had for the service, that seems to be where where the pain point is. Um, doesn't really matter. All all that matters is where do we define the the, uh, the LLC to be. Is there a maximum number of cores for like for ARM sixty four servers? For if we only have yeah. MC. No. So they would go completely flat. No, if we have 16. If, if, if we do it like Intel seems to be doing it for there, they only have MC that covers the entire package. True. And but they the just whole have whole part of the package if we have subnormal If you have not subnormal clustering, you, you can have part of the package, but it could be a relatively high number. I don't know how far you've gotten yet. 24, uh, 32 at least. Okay. 32 CPUs. And I guess that's why in the rewrite of the uh, select ID sibling thing, you now actually have a, a sketch feature to back off after I think five to ten minutes or something like that. So you so actually now don't have to default, we, we um, now throttle uh, depending on the average idle time. Yeah. Um, so we, yeah, because it, it takes a humongous amount of time to scan everybody. Yeah. Um, if we have SMT, we First, look to see if there is an idle core in the cache. If there is, we'll scan for an idle core. If there isn't, um, we'll just scan for an idle CPU, and that is um, limited depending on yeah. the average idle time. And then there is actually another heuristic at the end. You have two SMT heuristics. Yeah, there is. I don't even remember what the last one does. It looks like yeah, it, it, it looks for a um, idle sibling in the core or something like that. I, I forget why. Yeah, I think you're right. The first one looks for a complete idle core, so none of the hardware is ready for busy. If it fails doing that, then it looks for a number of CPUs which will be hardware ready on a number of cores. And if it doesn't find anything, then it ends up looking for an idle hardware thread near the CPU that we're looking for. So the wake white thing, um, is it just anything a new CPU? Was... So, so Mike Goldbrave um, did that, and it was uh, for things like PostgreSQL, which have a lot of client tasks and one server and, and you can see that the server is constantly waking all the clients and we use to then shoot the server around. This is not good. Um, so if it's waking a lot of tasks, um, you then say, well, there is no point following. So we just stay where we are. Um, and the wake wide tries to count how many different tasks this um, one task is waking. So it is an inhibiting uh, inhibitor on, on uh, the way to find. It basically kills the way to find. We just yeah. stay where we are. Yeah, it, was, yeah, it, was, uh, it, it doesn't pick a new CPU, it picks whatever CPU yeah, you use. Yeah, you can pick all the CPU and try to be going through the scheduling. Yeah. 
No, but in the end, the cold so that I can't touch him anyway. No, nothing is dead. That was a simple counting. You are looking for the ideas rule, and then you put the ideas rule, and then you try to narrow the, you go to the upper lower level, forest level, and you do your stuff, and kill it. That is kind of like the slow path, find out it. Yeah, uh, the slow path, yeah, you select that path you With what you're looking at, right? Yeah. I agree that there is this fast path. Select uh, I don't see link, but there is the other one that we use for the true CPU but as in as you could never end up there. That's uh, anyway. Um, I think for our ARM 64 situation, we should just decide whether or not we want to extend the MC to cover the last level cache. For those I, services, I think that the MC should really be the last level of cash. Which I think is the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Or if we should, uh, if we should keep on just modify the plans. <coughs> now the problem with changing how MC is, is defined right now is it's assumed that it's been mapped to a cluster. On ARM, we have various ways of detecting our topology. We have DT. We have NPIDR. Sorry? No, NPIDR is the fallback. And it's not ideal because it's not architected how it's uh, how it's supposed to be populated. So vendors can put whatever they like in there. Also, your package ID was wrong, I think. Because you put cluster ID in package ID. Yeah. The problem with NPIDR is that it has. In on V8, I think it has four 8-bit fields. Yeah. And if you've got SMT, the first 8 bits, I think, are sort of described that it should be the hardware thread. But the other three 8-bit fields, you can populate however you like. You don't have to reflect clusters or anything. You can put hash values in there or something if you want. It's allowed. So we can't rely on that at all. So the only reliable way of defining topology at the moment is using DT. In DT, you can specify hardware threads, you can specify cores, and you can specify clusters. There are no packages. You can have nested clusters, but nobody does it at the moment. So there is no way of identifying where your package is. And then there is a new way of specifying things, and that's actually what prompted this whole thing. And that is that Jeremy, my colleague from uh, from Austin, he's uh, he's pushing PPTT support, um, the uh, topology description for ACPI, to use that as a way of describing the topology for ARM servers. And PPTT is basically just a tree where you can describe all your caches, and it has a flag for each level. And one of those flags, I think, it's the only flag at the moment, isn't it? At the moment, it's the only flag that basically tells you where your package is in that tree. So the problem is, how do we map whatever is in that tree onto those levels? And ideally, if you describe the same platform in DT and using PPTT in ACPI, you should end up with the same topology. Uh, Sorry? Add a DT property? Uh, so Lorenzo already proposed to add a DT property to package. Don't we have cache topology in DT already? Yeah, so the cache topology should, should be able to do this. Yeah, on x86, we get it from CPU ID, and that's an old different framework. But um, you should be able to know where your L3 is and what CPUs are on the L3. Yeah. And that is basically what we do on Intel. We, we iterate the cache topology, and from that we build a CPU masks. Architecturally speaking, we have cache topology. You can't even say that our three is serving the LLC. No. So we, we can even architecturally visible caches, we can go up to them and them. And beyond that, we should actually be visible. We should end up having tables in box. In theory, we can do it quite quickly. It only matters for the, the cache immediately below either the NUMA node or the SOC. Right. Yeah. So 
not a lot of people have more than L3. Intel has an L4, I think, or, or we call it L4 with Crystal Ridge, the, the graphics oh, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, but, but we ignore that for, for, for this. Um, I don't know. Um, Z, uh, Z series um, has what they have, what they call a book domain, which is a giant. Um, um, L4, which is outside of packages, and it is to uh, amortize away NUMA. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and there is a number of other things, but it is very rare to actually see anything more than L3. This comes with lots of little caches, so maybe you can just give you a quick Yeah, that's all. In this case, we typically call it an LLC. Yeah. But it could be an L2, it could be an L3. Um, typically, not very much else. Okay. So, it seems that the right thing to do is to just extend MC to fix the last level cache. Basically, yeah. And ignore clusters, basically, because that seems to be what others are doing. I think some of the power. Um, chips that actually do have level two caches that are shared between two cores, but they seem to ignore that completely in their topology. Oh, there is <coughs> Intel architecture like that. And, that's pending. <laughs> and they have modules which actually consist of people who are for pending, mm -hmm. and they share cache yeah. within a module. Yeah. And they are kind of like that. Yeah, and, and then there is our three on top of this. <coughs> and it could be that that AMD Zen also has modules, but I keep forgetting the people. Yeah, but yeah, so it's it's not uncommon for these things to exist. Okay. But we typically completely ignore it. Well, so the nice But if if you can show benefit of adding a, a cluster domain in between, mm -hmm. sure. I just wanted to know whether or not. You find any benefit on other systems because if you didn't, then I wouldn't start by adding it and then see if it was uh, useful later. Then I would just go with extending MC so we match what other architectures do. And then if there is any, any need for a cluster, then, then we have to discuss how to insert that here. Oh, yeah, that's not hard. Um, just adding one field in it is probably. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's sim simple to do. Doesn't this be degenerated? Sorry? Let, let's say that throughout this. Cluster um, uh, uh, MC two level just for the cluster with MC and MC three level for the L three. Doesn't the, the cluster level be degenerated when we are building the technology because they will be the same slide at the end? Yeah, but then the degeneration goes to No, we used to have different masks to the then still get eliminated. I'm not sure. Uh, the, the, I think the flags. Yeah, they are. Flags. It, 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 you have exactly some flag. You have exactly the same flag. And you have the same flags, but the marks are different. No, and for some flags, it will actually fold the flag yeah. and throw it away anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. it could actually disappear unless we explicitly do something about yeah. the degeneration code. And so to me, it seems that. No, but that, that it's mean that for building is. Instead of trying to detect, you can see between the MC level 3 and MC level 2. And depending on the spew mass, this can be automatically degenerated and either keep the cluster root or the top level, depending on what is defined in the spew mass. Something yeah. like that. So Instead of trying to dynamically bring that, create all the level and then. On, on x86, we first build the. Um, core group mask, which is basically the MC mask, and that, that comes out of the, the cache level iteration yeah. magic. Because on, on the small core, some of the atoms, they don't have L3 either, and then we end up with something like this. Um, so that, that's all the yeah, magic iteration code and set up, and then we should use the core group mask yeah. for uh, generating the, the MC one. Okay. And that is. Either L3 or L2, depending on whatever you put in. Okay, that seems to be doable. Um, so, 
what should we do? The problem we have is also backwards compatibility because we probably can't change the topology of devices that are already shared. So extending the MC to cover all the actual last level cache. Why, why would this be a problem? Do people actually not take kernels? We're asking them to do so. We're asking them to do so. Yeah, it's so, a but, but you do this to make it go a bit faster, right? Yeah. So then they will be happy. But even that, <laughs> if, you, if you did like L2 and L3, yeah. you're saying that that would be like what that will create this platform from the other end to how you can play. That's right, but technically, somebody <laughs> could have built a system today that has the right. two and that is three. It's not in the main and line. Well, yeah. Sorry? See, technically, it's not in the main line right now. I mean, even if someone, what they will come and say, I mean, that being. Well, you know, this, this could all be described in DT, right? Yeah. So, this is, are we only considering systems that have DT in main line as being main line DT? Okay, then we have a lot of non main lines in small because it's very few DT things that actually have the And I think people actually started to remove DT from the uh, from the kernel tree as well. So I wouldn't well, ignore platforms that don't have that DT. That's the description for them to have no flexible organization. Yeah. Does this machine have any description? So you 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 wouldn't worry about breaking uh, backwards compatibility with well, all. Funny. But what I'm saying is, if you already have a description that describes a level two and a level three in DT, but the DT is not in the mainline tree at the moment, but you do use a mainline kernel, oh, then it would change the way we interpret the DT to actually move the MC yeah. level up. But why would they change the topology? Sorry? I think you see what that kind of diagram actually says. Okay, but what, why would they care? You, you, you say that it's improved performance. Why the for some workloads, I mean, you could have workloads where it's uh, where it's better to always keep your your weight jobs within the cluster. I mean, well, when you get a bug report, you can figure out what to do. But then we have to make an ex exception for that platform, I think. Uh, maybe it is, but then you have concrete data as to why and what. True. So my original idea was to basically use the flag of Lorenzo to post for DT and say, define your package in DT, then that would be the flag indicating I want a new way of interpreting the uh, the last double cache, and then you would actually set MC to match the last double cache, and if you don't define the package flag in, uh, in DT, then you go the old way. That would be difficult to look at the, um, the cache topology description in DT, because normally we are now we are describing L1, L2, and L3. Can't you rely on that? No, but this is a really good discussion. We actually want to see how we don't really know about it, so how it's pushing. So, I think it might be a slight interesting. Yeah. People are pushing their new methodologies down into it, so potentially for LLC, it will be able to push it down. Oh, okay. Well, LLC yeah. should uh -huh. be inside of the new cache, okay. spanning the new analysis. Great. But, but weren't there a patch from Intel recently about um, LLC spanning multiple numa nodes? Oh, yes, but uh, difficult. They did something very creative. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I, I understand the concept. Well, the difference is that if somebody has a regression because we change the way we interpret the uh, the cache so, hierarchy, 
maybe I'll have so many exceptions to that platform. Okay, but so maybe I don't know what, what kind of a regression that can be performance. There's a performance. The performance problem that right, happens is if you've got like two threads in your machine, right? Oh, I see. And so the two threads tend to stay on that MC within the cluster. Yeah, well, got otherwise, they the 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 And otherwise, they end up spread out, which yeah. is why the at the level thing makes sense because, you know, there's some benchmarks which show basically if you treat the clusters as SMTs that don't have SMT, you solve that problem. They stay close together if uh, there's just, you know, a couple threads. But when you start loading the machine up, basically it spreads out. So to get out of that whole regression problem, if you can imagine how the flag thing, if you yeah, this flag, it's a new way of interpreting things. Yeah, setting that flag is a bit humble, I think. Because then we know that this is technically yeah, that that's, 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 that's for your architects to use a chicken bit, or you can make a command yeah. line there. And yeah, but okay. then, the question what to do is uh, with, with the existing platform. So I think that the uh, analysis requirements they, uh, in this case, if they don't provide any description, or help you go, you can do it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah I, I agree. Well, if, if you don't provide the information, then you go <laughs> back to the NCRDR, then you just problem. take this. We all agree that extending MC is the way to go to do that based on the new stack. And when we form in the PPC stuff, we can do the new way as well. I mean, we, we can, well, for that, we would have to detect where the loss of the cache is in the PPC basis. That's what the problem Yes. Well, that's, that's, that's what that last yeah. patch was, the divorce yeah. the schedule yeah. domain and binds the LLC for yeah. whatever your that's in part. Um yeah. yeah, I think that concludes that topic. How much time do, do, do you have ten minutes. minutes? Ten minutes. Do you already yeah. have an option where to skip this back in Lorenzo already posted a patch for uh, the discussion a while back. This is the package stuff for? Yeah. Basically defining where packages in the uh, DT. So like a new mapping? So oh. No, it's just, a, it's just a property that's attached somewhere. It's basically just a That's all it is. Oh, the difficulty is to find the package. What you're saying is, this is still here at the level where it's significant to it was dead to them as opposed to a level to what you have more than a month and less. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but that makes a huge difference. So I have the person who in phone was like, oh, this is my new model. Mm -hmm. Because actually, yeah. Okay. But the, the, the problem we really have now without changing anything at all is that. Uh, Server point that actually gives you better performance to rely about the topology and describe something completely different from what the hardware really is. And we really don't want that situation because once it's in firmware. Yeah, we've seen that people put all kinds of weird and wonderful things in the API table because of it. Yeah. <coughs> There's another problem. We have in the, the Linux topology, we have this thing called package ID. You guys map this with cluster ID. This yeah. recently came up as being completely insane. Yes. So on x86, you seem to have divorced the the uh, user space visible topology thing from uh, from the sketch domain hierarchy. You use last level cache. You have a last level cache mask that you use. To Find your MC level, but you use a different mask. You use the core or package or whatever mask to actually. There is this set of topology underscore functions <clears throat> that end up being what's visible from user space. Yeah, so, so the package is enumerates the actual physical sockets. Yeah. So for the multi socket systems, package is what you can pull out. Yeah. And this becomes important when you do physical hardware and all that stuff. Yeah. 
cannot take a cluster out. No. So that mount mask has to be defined based on the TPTT flag or the new DT flag, and it shouldn't be cluster anymore. And I forgot why we found this out, but yeah, it should not be cluster. I think it's because from user space, if you use LS topo and, and get the whole thing out, then that's what you see. Um, and people use that for various things. Um, and defining clusters as such is, is a problem for that. So we need to we need to change that too. Um, well, we only have five minutes. Actually, um, the next question, once we have sorted all the other things out, is what do we do with Numa and Package and on? Um, on x86, you seem to kill the die level completely. You don't have it when you have Numa and Package. Right. Um, it just yeah, on ARM, because we rely on the default topology, technically it's still there. It gets eliminated sometimes, but it depends on how you define your MC levels relative to the uh, to the new node mask. Yeah, so so in the old um, core two era Xeons, it still existed because the core two era had the multi cluster, it had the mm -hmm. cluster on the, and therefore the die would <coughs> would, would still uh, function as as whatever. Packages and then it's named wrong because it's, it was actually a multi die chip. Mm -hmm. But the, the die domain was the package, and then the new map would consist of one or multiple actual physical packages. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for a long time, since the Halen uh, LLC matches, in, uh, matches node granularity, and afterwards we, we even went further and now have multiple nodes on, on the single package. Yeah, and now you have to move from the thing that I've got to catch. Sort of, maybe ish. It's, it's an absolute train wreck. Have you read the discussion? No. Uh, Lorenzo just formed for me a link to, to, to the. Do you want to know the details? details? Well, we have sort of been through some of it already in the discussion with, with PPTT. I don't think. <coughs> but the bit I don't like is to have. The uh, the uh, the default topology on ARM64 and um, Numenos on package because depending on how you define the last level cache, you can actually end up with still having a die level even though the whole thing is in package and I think that's just wrong. So but for Numa, the idea is that you have a memory control, so you have memory locality, mm -hmm. and the thing that we have with this what is it? That from our cluster stuff is um, so the L3 is 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 a mesh or is is, is a it's a distributed level it's three it's in a mesh level three right and we we cut that up. so um, there's some really nice pictures on the intercube for for um, lights. Banding, yeah, right. you can basically cut it in, into two sets. So, so you have a memory controller on either yeah. side. Um, but then you would expect that the local memory stays with you completely cut the thing off. But this doesn't happen. If you do a remote cache, you can still use a remote cache line in your L3 for your remote data. Right. But only for local data. So then the whole definition of cache size becomes very fluid. How so, and then, then the HPC people that want to know how much cash do I have yeah. per core. Um, so, yeah, those questions become difficult. Um, I think we've now decided to um, also shrink the cash size as exposed to user space. But I'd have to look at the last batch such that if we shrunk the number of CPUs, for the mask, you must also correspondingly shrink the cache size for this, so that if you compute the size per core for your HPC workloads, which is typically localized, they still get a usable number. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is very, very difficult, and, and yeah, I don't like. 
No, I think the problem, the main problem is if you have, you have a system like this where you have basically eight cores and you have a distributed level for each hash and you end up splitting the system into two new nodes. So you have a large level cache which actually spans more than your new node. Then how do you define your, your MC level? Should that be your per call level two cache? Or should it be the full system, which would break because then your MC level is bigger than your your uh, your Numa node? So, um, or do you just shrink MC to fit the size of the Numa node? The thing is, that's that's what I'm for. Um, you can, you can only call it a Numa node if it has a memory control. <laughs> and so, imagine this picture so having a memory the controller on the left and the right yeah. side. So. The right side accessing physical DRAM of the left hand controller is slower mm -hmm. than um, the right hand side accessing the memory controller on its own side. Yeah. Um, so there is memory locality. Um, the cache can sort of amortize this. Um, and yeah, it's, so I, I would just put it inside. It's difficult. But it's, Oh, I would favor shrinking MC to, to, to match the, yeah, uh, yeah. the, the <coughs> frame inside the new one. That's basically what we've done for SMC as well. Okay, I think time's up anyway. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.